thing about say Thai chilies which are not very hot in oh. Malaysia. I use the chili here, <laughs> which literally so will like kill people. <laughs> 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 and he actually ate the food. He ate it, got st <laughs> stomach problems the next two days, but he ate it. <laughs> so you decided to get in the kitchen and you're like, okay, I can't really find anything yes. that I'm really enjoying. Mm -hmm. Let me just try and learn how yeah. to cook. And at the time you were still working with the Malaysia Business Centre? Yes, yes. Okay, so you were there for quite a few years? I was there for about eight years. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So were you working in their legal department or? No, they didn't quite have a, the company was growing when I started. Mm. So I was growing with it. I was the manager there. Okay. Yeah. So we tried to basically work with the company as it was growing. So mm. there was a lot of people involved there. Mm. I had some good colleagues there. Okay. Yeah, had fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Yeah. When did you leave? Was it after you had your, your first son or was it right After about I had my first son because um, my first son was born and I couldn't find a good uh, nanny. After six months I was like, every time I'm at work, mm. I'm wondering what's happening at home. Mm. And I would leave work, I would go to work quite early. Uh, maybe about uh, six o'clock, no, seven, six thirty, yeah. to make sure I get to work at eight o'clock, mm -hmm. and we leave at six. Mm. So by the time I get home again, it's eight o'clock. Mm. You find the boy has been with the nanny the whole day. Yeah. You don't know what has happened. Mm. My heart was not in the right place, yeah. so I just decided, you know what, I've got to stop working. <laughs> okay, and I yeah. need to stay home with my baby. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Your oldest boy is mm. 10. He's 10. Uh -huh. yeah. And your second son? 8. 8. Yeah. Okay. So did you stay home that entire time or did you at some point go back to work? I never went back to work. Before I stopped working, I actually had started in a fresh produce export business. Mm. So I was exporting fresh produce. This was on your own? On my own. Okay. Yes. You were exporting to? To uh, UK, Belgium. Oh. Switzerland, yeah, okay. Sweden, yeah. Okay. So basically European countries, mm -hmm. yeah. So it helped me stay at home mm. while running the business because I don't have to go out and see the client. The client is not in the country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do everything on email. Mm -hmm. So it helped me mm -hmm. at that particular time. What, what exactly were you exporting? So Fresh produce, basically like, so mostly garden eggs, uh -huh. uh, Hot peppers. Hot peppers. I don't bananas. Know, and bananas, matoke, sweet oh. potato. Okay. Well, so a lot of people say that's very difficult because of you know the time period in which you have to get the food there oh. fresh and a lot of the standards that are imposed. Yes. And you were doing this a while ago. Yes. How did you manage to? Find you basically a way? have to get the. Uh, we already had a buyer who approached us. Which is what made it easier for us to actually start the business. So it, it wasn't like we were looking for a market, no. the market looked for us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that helped. Mm -hmm. So the person on the other side sort of helped us along to put everything in place. Mm -hmm. And my husband also uh, put things in place on this uh, Uganda export board and mm -hmm. all that. Did yeah. you have a network of farmers that you were working with? Yes, we did. We At that particular time, we even gave farmers seeds or helped them lease land oh, wow. to farm and sell back to us. So it was good. Yeah. Are you still doing that? Once in a while, not often though. Okay. Yeah. Because again and again, we're hearing about, you know, our leaders keep talking about the future of Uganda really our economy is yes. agriculture yes. and that's the strength but you find less and less people young people especially really investing in agriculture yes do you see that discrepancy there I do and I think it's a little bit sad because at the end of the day so when all else fails everybody still needs to eat yeah people food. have to eat yes food still needs to be provided mm -hmm. so I think agriculture is the way to go People need to get into agriculture. I don't have green fingers, so I, st I really wish a lot of people would go into agriculture. <laughs> and the bunch asked, did you ever try? <laughs> I can kill a cactus, so I don't want to try. <laughs> no one can kill a cactus. <laughs> you, you've not seen me. <laughs> okay. 
neglect. <laughs> you forget about it. I forget about it. One day you're like, it's a cactus, it will grow on its own. Yeah. And then you come back, well, what's happening to the <laughs> So I leave everything to my gardener and I'm like, please take care of it. For okay. me, I don't know what you're doing. As long as it's green and it's growing, it's flowering, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As long as it looks nice and healthy, yes. we're good to go. Yes. Okay, so in that time, you started focusing on your export business of the fresh produce. Yes. Uh huh. So. And that is where also it helped me because there was a lot of vegetables sometimes we had as an uh, as rejects, mm. you know, because the things going to Europe are always uh, standardized. Yes. It has to be this size, it has to be this color. Mm -hmm. So whatever doesn't make the mark stays. So I used to think, what are we going to do with this? So we started cooking slowly, slowly, add more vegetables. Mm. Then the vegetables became too much. I didn't know what to do. With them. I'm wondering, did you try to sell them here? Or? I did, but then um, the farmers are the ones selling back, selling to you. Yeah. Now you're selling it back to them. Oh. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 learn as you go along. Okay. Yes. So when did you actually like really dive into catering? Because you do events like yes. big events yes. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I started the Facebook group mm -hmm. when I was actually in the export produce business. Uh -huh. That's uh, Kampala, Food, Kampala Network. Food Network. Yeah, which is as huge. a hobby. Mm -hmm. Yes, as a hobby. As a hobby. I just wanted to share okay. recipes, you know, engage other people, have a network of friends. That's about so it. So were you falling in love with food at that point yes. in time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> Everybody there are some people who don't like food. I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's when I started just sharing recipes on the Facebook group, and then people started asking me, "Why don't you, mm. you know, cook and sell the food to us? You know, we want good food." So I started small, uh, just serving a few people here and there. Delivery. There was a lot of things you learn along the way, mm -hmm. how to pack food, how to deliver food properly. Mm -hmm. yes. So so you first started doing deliveries mostly? Yes, deliveries, okay. mostly deliveries. Okay. Uh, then people started calling me to do their, say, small functions at home, went to, you know, corporate parties, weddings, conjulas, mm -hmm. and then we kept growing and now we are in contract catering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy how basically this social media platform exactly. actually grew into your business yes, now. Yes, yes. It's amazing. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then it's also such a community of people who are constantly trying to learn, constantly trying to do different things. Yes. And you share a lot as well about what you do in your I own kitchen. I think these days I'm not sharing too much. Mm -hmm. I'm so busy. You're so busy? I'm so busy. <laughs> But uh, yes, whenever I've seen one, I get, or, one or two times, you're like, uh, I'm so tired today, so I asked the husband to cook, yes. or I told my boys to sort themselves out. I do that a lot these days. <laughs> <laughs> you're all grown, you're all boys, take care of yourself. I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> all right. I'm going for a massage, don't disturb me. <laughs> so, it's a challenge for you, because especially moving from like when you are just delivering, it's mm -hmm. easy to kind of control that. Yes. But then now when you move into the space where you're not like catering for actual events, yes. um, that means you have to get the right staff to hire the staff to mm -hmm. help you. Yes. What was your biggest challenge moving into, into catering as a business? Basically, I think... Uh we currently in Uganda, I think there's a lot of apathy in the workforce. People come to work, but they are not really looking at putting their best foot forward. They are seeing it as they are, I'm here for the money. Uh, so they're just doing just enough. Yeah, just enough. So that they can get their salary. Yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. that's you see potential. Some I, I have very good staff and I also have bad staff. So I have a high uh, staff turnover. Mm. So, you know, you keep adjusting, finding the right people to put into the business. Mm -hmm. Because it's not easy to find the people with the passion to do the job. Yes. Of course, I don't know how many people will have the passion to actually be a good waiter. That means you need to have a service minded.
You want to see the client happy. You want to see the client served well. And the client goes off when they are satisfied. Mm -hmm. If you are not seeing the vision, the end game, you won't do it. Yeah. Yes, because right. you are not yeah. seeing what you are trying to achieve. And getting that vision across is not easy when apathy is there. And also in the industry currently, there's a lot of uh, fraud, theft. Mm. I actually sometimes wonder, like really, you know, you want to steal, you steal where you can then retire to Bahamas or something like that. Not <laughs> potatoes and tomatoes. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Not potatoes. Yeah, like oh where, where, what do you expect to achieve by stealing potatoes and tomatoes? Yes. Yes, you took care of yourself today. Mm -hmm. But if you lose, if I catch you red-handed and you lose your job tomorrow, what's going to happen to you and after that? You lost that? it because of potatoes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> Very short-sighted. I, short fa I failed to grasp that and I st still, until today, I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not seeing where they are coming from at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe because they don't see the vision, yeah. no matter how much you communicate, because the mind refuses to see, because they are focused on themselves. Yes, yes. If you're not then focused, the picture. yes, mm -hmm. your focus has to be on the client. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The client has to be the end goal. Having said that, there are some clients who are very difficult. You can't please everyone in the food industry, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Because I might put a lot of spices in my food and some... Crystal, you will come and say, oh my God, that was the best thing I have had. Mm -hmm. Another one will say, I've never had anything that was before. Okay. So, yeah. so you go and say, okay, 90% said food is good. Okay, this 10%, let's see what we can do for them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. So, in terms of... Like you said, now staff is was one of your big challenges yes. as well. But also in terms of just building confidence in terms of your clients, mm -hmm. you said the main thing is also to have a vision where you look at your clients yes. to make sure that they're yes. they're happy. Yes. What about um, in terms of your business as well, being the availability of products? Is that something that at least was covered? As in the ingredients mm -hmm. and all, you kinda I would say like. Your slogan, it's gifted by nature. <laughs> mm -hmm. You really have most of the things that mm -hmm. you need here. You don't really, unless we are talking about things like apples, grapes, and things like that. But everything that is in a recipe can more or less be adapted with ingredients that are available in Uganda. Right. You don't really have to struggle too much unless you really want that particular item. So you can actually be very creative with the food that we have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Maybe the spices, some small things need to be imported, but I think everything is more or less available in Uganda mm -hmm. compared to ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Now we are we are quite good actually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hmm. So are you a baker as well as as someone who dabbles with? You know, we like to say food, food. <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> With main meals? <laughs> I, don't I, don't think I, I don't think I will actually uh, confine myself anywhere. I just like to experiment. So just if keep you see a recipe everything. or you see something and you're like, okay, let me go for it. Yes, like I might see a recipe that calls for, say, some kind of fruit that is not available. The recipe that is not available. I will go, like say, walk into the delicacy and then mm -hmm. say, Okay, but this is available. Mm -hmm. Let me substitute with that and then we see what happens. Yeah, sometimes it's a flop, but sometimes it works. So okay, so you keep trying different things. I keep things. trying, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you think has been like your biggest success? Like, if you look at your food and you're like, okay, I know this is my go-to. I can never go wrong with this. The majority of people will always go for this, will always like it. I can't put a finger on it. No? Yeah, because my things keep changing daily mm -hmm. yeah okay so you don't have like a set menu no mm -hmm. I don't do any set menus my menu mostly keeps changing like today I will tell you my food is in Bulgaria tomorrow it's in Mexico the other day it's in Italy so I keep changing it's basically more or less because I don't want to get bored mm -hmm. 
so because I get bored eating the same food all the time so I'm thinking my clients are also the same mm -hmm. so I'm doing the same thing okay to keep it changing keep it moving and just keep it exciting okay yeah have you at any point decided to like study food or take a course or it's just been your own journey of discovery basically it's my own journey of discovery and trial and error yeah because I, I have in the past looked at people who studied and you know you can study but you don't want to improve yourself mm -hmm. that comes from basically at the end of the day to keep trying yes. to keep experimenting to keep learning i don't think you can ever finish learning about food mm. yeah yes yeah okay all right and has your husband been very supportive of this whole journey when it started making money, yes. <laughs> but before that? Before that, he didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> He's like, you're cooking, it's okay, go do it yourself. That's very honest though. So he didn't see the... But he, did you he, have the vision at no, that he, point? No, because I started off like it's a hobby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he thought I was just having fun. Okay. He didn't want to, you know, okay, go and do what you want to do. So he didn't want to get involved too much, but uh, now, yeah. <laughs> now that you're making money, yeah. it's like, yay! <laughs> okay. Yeah. So what has been like your, your biggest event that you, like you, it was so scary mm -hmm. at the time that it came to you and you're like, how am I going to do this? But then you're able to pull it off. Do you have any of those milestones that you remember? I don't know. I think I've come so far mm -hmm. along and mm -hmm. I'm thinking like at every step of the way I always thought that oh this is bigger I started with cooking for five people yes. and it was like so much of work you know yeah like, then I did 10 and I'm like oh my god they doubled mm -hmm. <laughs> then 50 I'm like how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. Now I 1,000 people, I don't think twice about it. <laughs> wow, so you've just been taking it on as it yeah, comes. Yeah, just as it comes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so you say now that you're very, very busy. Yes. Um, do you have your own like regular catering delivery business that's running? Or are you catering for companies? Mostly what's keeping me busy is the contract catering, where the companies hire you to provide food for them okay yes so in a way in a essence like running a cafeteria for a company yes ah, yeah okay so that's yes. what you're doing yeah so do you find time to still go and dabble a little bit or not in as the much kitchen? As, mm -hmm. not so much oh, which is what i'm miss missing it? yeah i'm missing it because now once you get very formal in the mm -hmm. business you get stuck in paperwork yeah. mm -hmm. there's emails coming from all sides there's paperwork to be handled, taxes to be paid, everybody is calling you about, uh, you know, what's to be bought tomorrow, this one is missing here, that's not happening there. You don't get time to go and do what you actually started doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I miss that. So you miss it? Yeah. Well, I guess at some point you try to find the time for yeah. that, but if the business is doing well and it's growing, mm -hmm. do you look at it like your baby, You're like, oh, it's very much my baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 the baby that is taking most of the, my time right now mm -hmm. because the growth is by leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you are trying to adjust to the growth spurt that um, how, you know, what companies sometimes do when a business suddenly grows is bring in more people to help yes but I am trying to do that at the same time you know the people you are bringing in are also trying to adjust to you as well so yeah, you have good people mm -hmm. who push you along mm -hmm. in the right direction mm -hmm. working with the company vision so you need to be able to adjust and see how the the you know the staffing can actually grow the company. Mm -hmm. The ones who don't wor work so well, you need to try to see if you can rotate them somewhere else or just let them go. Because it's like you're pulling out weeds, really. The mm -hmm. ones who don't really work with the company's vision, you have to, unfortunately, let go. Yeah. Let go. Yeah.